On the back of a video I did the other week talking about how two athletes could be running or working at the same intensity but have very different heart rates. And it really came down to stroke volume. How well can we pump out blood from the heart per beat? So what I want to talk about today on the back of that question was how do we actually improve it? Is it a sport specific uh, type of stimulus that we need by doing some swimming? If you're a runner, does that help those types of things? Or is it more just targeting specific parts of our physiology to increase that change in the heart? So we're gonna break it down nice and simple, nice and quick one today, talking about the physiology of stroke volume and getting the most efficient pumping out of the heart as we can. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Nick here, talking science of endurance and everything sports science in general. Thanks to everyone who's already been subscribing and helping grow this great community we got here. But if you haven't subscribed or you're watching for the first time, please consider clicking that red button down below, hit subscribe, Keep up to date with all the latest videos on the channel. Join us when we go live Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Melbourne time. Get your questions answered on the Science of Endurance. And if you have been following on for a while, we're getting plenty of value out of these videos, enjoying some of the content we're creating here and want to support the channel a little bit more, consider hitting the join button down below. Become a part of Team NJ Sports Science for under the price of a coffee per month. It's a small sacrifice, but it does help this channel grow dramatically, whether it be new pieces of equipment so I can make better quality videos for you guys, whether it's microphones, cameras, things like that, or just for me to be able to spend more time creating videos on this channel and not being under pump uh, at work, things like that to work the extra hours so I can uh, keep this channel up and support it. So if you are getting lots of value out of it and you're really enjoying it, you want to go that extra mile, by no means is it a necessity, but I do really appreciate the support. We've had a great contribution from a number of new members to Team NJ Sports Science already. Going back to what we're talking about in the intro though, Stroke volume, how much blood can the heart pump out per beat is a really significant indicator of what's gonna to happen to our heart rate. If we can pump more blood out per beat, typically at the same exercise intensity, you're gonna have a lower heart rate than someone who can't pump as much out per beat. And an interesting question that came uh, on the back of a video I did talking just about that uh, principle in terms of heart rate uh, being higher for one athlete and lower for another, but they're running at the same speed or they've got the same intensity output, whether it be power on the bike, etc., comes down to stroke volume, but how do we actually improve it was more the question. Is it a sport specific response or is it more of a physiological response? And I'm gonna begin this discussion and we're just gonna keep it short today, but by saying it's, at the end of the day, the heart is a muscle. So compared to something like the lungs, the lungs are an organ, they're not gonna change dramatically because once they're kind of genetically set, they're gonna to grow to a particular size. Yes, we might be able to increase the elasticity a little bit, so they stretch a little bit more, or we can increase the way we diffuse oxygen into the blood, uh, the bloodstream through surface area, surface area of alveoli. So they're the little, um, it, it almost on diagrams, they look like little bunches of grapes, if you like, in, in the system, in the lungs. That's where uh, gases move from in the lungs into the bloodstream and from the bloodstream into lungs. So CO2 and oxygen interacting there. Those things are gonna change a little bit, but for the most part, they're relatively set based on our genetics because it's an organ. The heart though is a muscle much similar to your quads, your biceps, wherever it might be, your hamstrings. We can train it and increase its size, but also how forcefully it can contract. So it's strength or it's hypertrophy, if you want to call that in terms of hypertrophy being the size, the strength being how forcefully it can contract um, or the power or whatever you want to mention it as. We can, we can change that because it is muscle. Now it does interact a little bit differently. We're talking about cardiac muscle versus skeletal muscle. Without going too much into the ins and outs, it is slightly different in how it uh, how it works. We can't necessarily, like if I wanna contract my skeletal muscles in my hands, I send a signal from my brain to my hand and it causes a contraction. That's a voluntary muscle action. I can choose when I wanna open and shut my hand consciously. The heart is just gonna keep beating. So that's what we call an, uh, uh, an involuntary uh, contraction. Cardiac muscle is not gonna be controlled necessarily by me thinking, okay, I'm gonna increase my heart rate now. If I sit here and just think really, really hard, I'm gonna increase my heart rate. It might come up a little bit because I might self-induce some stress or a little bit of anxiety. It might come up a couple of beats, but it's not. I'm not gonna be able to get my heart rate to 190 beats just sitting here. It's gonna be a physiological response that the body's gonna do what it needs to do to be able to pump enough oxygen or supply enough oxygen around the system. Our supply chain is the bloodstream, so therefore heart rate is gonna be a factor in that. But if we wanna be able to increase our stroke volume to be able to pump more blood out per beat, so when we are working at higher intensities, we don't have to beat as frequently or at lower intensities, go out for your long run is a typical one. We don't have to pump as hard or work as hard physiologically or, or cardiovascular wise. We can just cruise along, nice comfortable heart rate. It's also gonna keep us nice and calm and relaxed as well, that lower heart rate. For some of our team sport athletes, under sub, sub 140 beats per minute, there's a bit of research to say that that's better for decision making and making some clear, uh, clear decisions on field. So the fitter you are and the lower we can keep our heart rate in particularly key moments where you might have to make a decision, more ideal 
not necessarily trying to keep it that low, but under 140 is probably going to be where our best decision-making happens. Maybe 140, 160 is where it's going to be a little bit impaired and then up at 180, it's very hard to make a decision. It's, it's reactionary. It's not bringing the information to assess. So from a stroke volume perspective, really it comes down to physiological adaptation. There's no one sport that's going to be better or worse for improving the amount of blood that we can pump out per beat. And I'll tell you why. It comes down to two, two factors or, or two key contributors, really. The first one being the size of the left ventricle. So the, the, the heart has four, um, four chambers. It has a left atrium, a right atrium, a right ventricle, and a left ventricle. Now, the left ventricle is the last part of the heart where blood fills into, and then once the heart contracts, it pushes it out into the arteries. The arteries take it to the arterioles. Arterioles take it to the capillaries, which allow oxygen to diffuse it into the muscle. Then we come back up through the veins to bring blood back up to the heart to reoxygenate it and through the lungs, etc. We're good to go. So the last part of that heart process before blood gets squeezed out, where it's got all the oxygen in it and then it's allowed to pump out into the body is the left ventricle. So by doing any sort of aerobically based training, typically continuous training, longer, slower stuff, um, bigger, longer, extensive, uh, when I say longer, extensive, 20 minute continuous effort, 30 minute, hour and a half, two hours, that type of training is gonna induce an increase in size in the left ventricle. So we're just gonna have it bigger. It's gonna contract just as forcefully, but it's gonna be bigger so we can fill it with more. I always talk about, it's like drink bottles. It's like having a small small drink bottle versus a big drink bottle. If I have a small drink bottle on my bike, well, I fill it up, I can only get a little bit out of it, and then I might have to stop more frequently to fill it up. That's kind of like what the heart does. If the heart's not as big and the left ventricle is a little bit smaller, it has to pump more frequently to get the blood out there at the same overall rate, that cardiac output, how much blood is ejected from the heart per minute. If I have a lot, much larger drink bottle, a much larger left ventricle size, I don't have to refill it as much. So that's the same as, well, the heart doesn't have to pump as frequently to get the same overall output. Great, that's one box tick. Like I said, longer, slower is the, or, or continuous training is more of the adaptation or the type of stimulus we need for that type of adaptation. The other side of it is then, because I said before, we're talking about muscle here, we need to increase, increase the hypertrophy or the thickness of the left ventricle wall. So the wall, the left ventricle gets bigger through our more continuous training and the thickness of the wall, so instead of it being one finger thick, let's say it's twice as thick, there's twice as much muscle, we can contract more forcefully, it's squeezed more forcefully. So when it is bigger, we can then contract it hard. That's gonna to help to rush that blood out a little bit quicker as well. That is also gonna improve our stroke volume total and those two adaptations together are gonna increase it dramatically. That thickness of the left ventricle wall, the hypertrophy stuff, increasing how forcefully we can contract more comes when we're under a much higher stress and the heart has to pump more frequently or more forcefully. This is gonna happen at high intensity interval training. Anything that's gonna be high intensity or intermittent in nature. Strength training and resistance training in the gym is also a good one as well. We're under a lot of stress. We're lifting a reasonably heavy amount of weight for what you can tolerate. You're under a lot of stress in terms of the cardiovascular system. You're actually trying to play catch up. It's working hard. We have uh, blood pressure increase when we're under that type of load. There is a bit of a strain there. We're not strained for a long period of time. Eight reps or so, six reps, things like that in the gym isn't going to put a big stimulus on the heart. But in that short period, we're straining because we're trying to get blood around the system to try and get oxygen supply where we can. Our body wants to be as aerobic as possible. I mean, like six reps can be quite anaerobic. So it's the type of thing that that's where we're also getting some good stimulus to that strain in terms of um, on, on the heart from a lifting weight can also be good. So high intensity intervals um, or high intensity training in general, intermittent type training or strength and resistance training in the gym are really good ones for getting that adaptation. As I've just mentioned there, we're talking about a physiological stimulus. What is going to increase the size of the left ventricle and how forcefully it can contract? We're not talking about, well, what sports are gonna be better? Notice I didn't mention, apart from resistance training in the gym, if you wanna class that as maybe a sport in itself, it's more of a training method, I would argue, or, or a way that we can go and get a training stimulus. It doesn't matter if you wanna go swim, you wanna cycle, you wanna run, you wanna row, you wanna kayak, you wanna paddleboard, whatever your sport is, cross country ski, I'm just gonna reel off a whole bunch here doesn't really matter as long as you're hitting those types of stimulus. And this is why things like polarized training are quite popular and why we get good benefit. A lot of that longer, slower, continuous is gonna develop that left ventricle size. The high intensity interval training way up the other end, that polarized nature is gonna develop that hypertrophy of the heart. Together, we get a much more effective stroke volume because we're more forcefully contracting and also pumping out more blood per beat. Bit of a summary there. Hopefully that explains that a little bit more in detail about the stroke volume aspect and how we can improve it. If you have any further questions about heart rate or how heart rate uh, is impacting your training, what you've seen, 
compa compared to others? Are you higher, lower? Let me know in the comments down below. Always interested to hear your ideas and thoughts and your questions so I can answer them in videos like this on the channel. As always, continue to subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate the support. Let's keep growing this great community. Getting very, very close to 2,500 subscribers as well. And I would really love if we could tick that over nice and quickly. Also, heading over onto Instagram, I'll leave it down below at NJ underscore sports science. Send your direct message questions through. If you can't join our live streams weekly on Wednesday nights, jump over there, send me a direct message, ask your question. I can bring it up in the live stream, but it's an easy way for you to still get a response uh, if you can't contact me uh, during the live stream, can't join us. Send a message over there and I'll get back to you, but also it's a good discussion point for later on, or it might turn into a video like we've done here. The side thing as well, go hit that follow button over on Instagram too. We're getting very, very close to a thousand, which is another great benchmark we can tick off. So hopefully soon we can tick off two and a half thousand on, on YouTube here and a thousand on Instagram. That'd be unbelievable. Great community we've got building here, doing some great things. And I'm hope, hoping you're enjoying all the content so far. I'm going to leave it there today. That is it. And we're going to see you in the next one.